morning everybody it's Jean here Jean True Love from True Love Quilts for you um, uh, no tutorial today but a bit of a preparation work coming up to my Dresden plate block I am working on my uh, dear Jean quilt my uh, Jean's block party 2021 sampler quilt uh, if you've been following you have uh, we are about 10 11 weeks into this project um, it might be a mystery for some of you um, because you're not figuring out you're trying to figure out what you're going to be making with your blocks because I've been concentrating on making one block this course this lesson um, these tutorials are for beginners are beginner beginners trying to teach a beginner the absolute basics of quilt making um, so we've we're about as I said we're about 10 weeks into it we've made many blocks but this week, if you are following my idea, my pattern that I, I will put up, as you see in the center of my medallion quilt, I have what is called a Dresden plate. Now, a Dresden plate is a applique. We are making a that lovely big flower look, and then we're going to be stitching that onto a background piece of fabric. Now, in order to get the fans or the blades of our Dresden plate, I will have told you that you do need for this lesson or for this week, you do need a Dresden plate template or a ruler um, this Dresden plate that I'm going to be using is um, an eight inch it's eight inches tall with a flat top here and this is from uh, www uh, www.simplicity.com easy quilting Dresden uh, Dar by Darlene Zimmerman now the reason I'm showing you this with the flat top and this angle is I have a little something just to explain to now, you. Um, as an, I'll read this verbatim. As you see, the sides of a Dresden wedge or blade are angled, and that angle is measured, measured in degrees. If the sides of each blade are straighter than, than this one, say, it takes more of them to complete the 360 degree circle or plate. If the sides of each blade are more angled, more degrees, it will take fewer to complete the plate. Now, I, I thought this was very interesting because I am going to be cutting 20 pieces of fabric from my K facet fabrics out of this template ruler. This ruler blade is 18 degrees, okay? It should tell you on your uh, template when you get it what degree ruler this is. So if you are using a, a pattern or a commercial template, it will tell you how many blades to make for each Dresden plate. If you're starting from scratch, you'll need to measure the degree of your blade using a, a protractor. Then divide 360 by the number of degrees for each plate, and that's how many blades you'll make. So if a blade is 18, if your blade is 18 degrees, 360 divided by 18 equals 20. Hence, I will be cutting 20 of these. You'll make 20 blades for the complete circle. So if, you, um, if you're using 18 degrees, reducing enlarging, it would seem that you, to reduce or enlarge a Dresden plate quilt by adding or subtracting blades, but that's not the case. You make a Dresden plate larger by extending the length of your template. So if you wanted to make a really massive Dresden plate, you would use a ruler as this and just go up on each side and, and that would enlarge it. And the same thing with reducing it. You would use the same template, but you would go from this point and keep your degrees and that way, to keep your angles and that way you would need the exact amount, 20, even if you're making a smaller one, 20, even if you're making a larger one because of the degrees. I just think that's fascinating. We will be um, putting a center circle inside. Now I just wanted to show you a few examples and I think I've shown you these before. I think I've shown you this before. 
Um, my Dresden plate, my Dresden template here has a flat top. Now, if you're new to making Dresdens, this flat top will yield, when we sew it, a point. And you're thinking, how does that work? It's, that's when I do my tutorial, I will, I will explain to you, we stitch across, we turn, and it turns into a point. However, I just wanted to give you an example of what my Dresden is going to end up looking like on my quilt with the points. So here's a Dresden plate I've made before, made this while ago, and these are the points of, that we are going to make. I made this exact quilt using this, this template here, okay? This size of Dresden plate is what is going into the center medallion of my G, Dear Jean quilt with the points, okay? Now, there are some quilts, this isn't quite as big, but there are some blades or some rulers that you can get that are actually curved at the top and then you just sew the sides down and leave your curved raw edge however you want to applique it. Now you can make a curved top to a Dresden plate if you wanted not the points but a curve by just cutting it perhaps this way and then cutting a gentle curve. It's very interesting that here um, Marty Mitchell actually has a Dresden plate set. I just copied this off of Pinterest and it has a, her, her template actually has a curved top there, if you can see that. There's what we're using, the straight top, but she actually has templates for a curved top. The curved top for a Dresden plate will end up looking like that. I made this one ages ago. This isn't quite as big, but I actually curved the top. I cut them out each individually after having sliced off my, um, my template. I, I cut them this size, and then I actually cut the 20 of them individually, the, circle, the rounded top. So that is what, if you used a curved top, what it would look like. Um, each one of these appliques is being stitched onto the background fabric. Now, I do something a little bit different when I'm appliqueing, especially a large applique. I, um, I feel that when you're, when you're either blanket stitching or zigzag stitching or even a straight stitch, like a raw edge applique, there's a lot of fabric on my plate here to go onto one piece of fabric. I actually line with a very thin lining, a very thin muslin. I, I will line my center block here. And I'm gonna take you over to my cutting board and show you what I've done. You don't have to do that at all. But I feel when you're ap actually coming next week or in a few days, coming to actually applique, and I'm using a blanket stitch, and I'll show you on my, not my Juki, on my brother machine, because I do need a decorative stitch to do this applique. I mentioned that to you in the very beginning, that you're going to be needing a, either a, a zigzag stitch um, or a decorative stitch to do your applique or if you're hand appliqueing it, awesome, super. That's like a needle turn applique, awesome. The way we're doing this one here, the way we're doing it with the pointed top, our pointed top, when I, when, when I construct it, as you will see from this template, our pointed top here is finished. It's finished, it's not raw. So when I go to applique, this is what I'm gonna be doing, my applique plate. Um, when I go to put that on my background, it will be a finished edge that I'm going to blanket stitch. Again, again, I will need a, I will need my decorative stitch. Again, I, I put, I've lined my piece of fabric, um, and that, that way, when you're doing a stitch, sometimes your stitches will tend to gather up the, the, the fabric behind. You have to be very, very careful. And it's all I'm doing is stabilizing my background fabric. And I will show you how I've done that with a, with a thin, cheap lining, like a muslin. You can use a iron-on interfacing, um, like a very lightweight, a very, very featherweight interfacing. Now, a lot um, of people like to cut away the back, the backing fabric behind your applique. 
so you don't have two pieces of fabric there. I actually add a, a third. You Again, you don't have to do that because once I have my plate, my backing and my lining, that's three lots of fabric. I quite like that and it would only be in the center of my quilt, but it's a big block and it's surrounded with a lot of other blocks that have a lot of seams. So I'm okay with it like that. By no means do you have to um, do what I do. You can just applique onto a piece of fabric, whatever your background is, a neutral, whatever that may be. And mine is my black, uh, mine is my black dot on white fabric. I'm putting my bright colors of my plate, 20 of them, which I will be cutting out. Just a little bit, a little bit more information that I got from um, Pinterest and I didn't even realize it. It's this using this template, the diameter for Dresden plates made by using the easy Dresden ruler by Simplicity. Um, if you're using this ruler at, at eight inches, the full height, you are going to, it's going to yield an 18 and a, almost 18 and three quarter inch unfinished block. You're going to have a plate this large. Not, not on the background, your block's not going to be, your actual plate's gonna be almost 19 inches across. It's a big Dresden plate. That's why I wanted to, that's why I wanted to soften the look of my quilt, which is very angular, which I explained last week. Now for my center block, I will, I've been, I will have cut it at about 25 inches, maybe 25 and a half inches square. I, I can always cut it down. I can always cut my block down. Then when I put my applique on it, if it does scrunch up a little bit, it won't have impeded on my 24 inch finished block. However, I might also, when I'm done, my 20, uh, my block, which will be bigger than this, my plate is not 18 inches, but my block's gonna be bigger. I might actually put in quarter, smaller quarter Dresden plates in each corner. I may do that. So that is just some information which I thought was very interesting. You need to figure out the degree of your ruler. Hopefully you'll have this ruler, if not, and if you have a different degree, this was what was most important, you may need to have only 16 blades in your quilt, in your, in your applique. Or as I'm doing, I need, I'm needing 20. If you're doing it even more, you'd need 24 blades. So you have to figure out the construction method, which I will be showing you in a few days, is exactly the same how we're going to construct our blade, our Dresden plate, but the amount of blades might be, might vary from what I'm doing. But again, it's constructed exactly the same. So right now, so right I'm going to take you over, show you my fabrics that I've already cut from my K facet fabrics and also my background fabric. This is my background fabric for my large center medallion. And these are the 20 fabrics that I have pulled from my K facet fabrics. I've pulled all of, I've pulled both sort of hot colors, the, the oranges and the reds and the yellows, and then I've sort of, and the pinks, and then I've pulled the cooler colors, the greens and the purples and the blues here. So I will alternate. I will do a, a I've done 10 of the warm colors and 10 of the cool colors. I sort of with points my Dresden plate's gonna look like. Now I was telling you how I actually sort of line my my 
backing fabric here. This is a very inexpensive, very thin piece of muslin. Again, you don't have to do that if you're planning on even cutting away behind your applique, but I don't do that. I just did a running stitch up here. And then when I go to actually put my applique, well, I'm going to concentrate on making the plate, right? I'm going to do that. But what, then when I actually put my, my Dresden plate on top here, what I will do is I'll just to secure, I've secured it up there. I don't want to stitch down the sides yet. I'm going to just do a few dabs of glue just to hold that water soluble glue and let the glue dry and then I will actually glue with an Elmer's glue stick which I quite like or you can use an Elmer's school glue which also is water soluble it doesn't gum up your needle I have found my Elmer's glue stick doesn't gum it up by all means you can use a spray basting if you want to put our plate down um, or you can um, you can pin it whatever um, I, I like to use my glue to keep my my uh, plates on but I will address that next week right now if you want to you can go cut your if, 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 if you have this degree ruler and you want to you want to be able to starch your fabrics really well um, and so and then we can get ready to make our Dresden plate um, next week and we can then start putting it together and making our big block. I've cut my piece of fabric here at 25, 25 and a half. Um, and then when I, when I put this on, I'll figure out if I want to cut it down exactly and put my f little plates on the corner. You might want to do that. Um, we are going to be bordering this. Uh, I think sure. I remember I showed you last week. I'm going to be bordering. It might be a bit wider than this. This block I'm going to be bordering with my black and white stripe. I quite like that, even though it looks sort of carnival-y. I think that's really pretty. I think that's really pretty. So this will be one of my borders around my large block. And then we will, um, we were going to, we're going to do our borders and our sashing at the very end. Uh, I have a method to my madness here, even though it's a medallion quilt and it's growing. Um, I have to figure out what, what size to make my borders and then my sashings to make everything fit. That was the whole point in just sort of making blocks. And then at the end of the day, I'll make them fit and I'll explain them to you exactly how I do it. But for now, um, prepare your fabric. If, if so, I've, again, I've cut this at about 25, 25 and a half inches and I have cut my 20 blades. All right, stay tuned for how we're going to make our Dresden plate. All right, folks, see you later. Love from the true loves.